Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a crystal explosion. I have here a beaker of sodium acetate crystals. If you take these and heat them up in boiling water, you can melt the crystals. But once that liquid cools off, you'll notice that it doesn't turn into crystals again. So what's happened here is the sodium acetate solution has become super saturated. So it's below the temperature at which solid crystals can form, but they haven't gotten enough activation energy to start forming. But I have here some crystalline sodium acetate. Watch what happens when I take a little bit of these crystals and put it on the end of my dropper here and stick it in the sodium acetate. You get a crystal explosion. When you introduce the crystal sodium acetate into the liquid that's super saturated, you now allow the liquid to start building upon that crystal. So the initial crystal acts as a nucleation point for the supersaturated liquid. What's really cool about this is when crystals form, it's exothermic, so it gives off heat to form a crystal. Okay, now let's see how warm this is. So it's 50 degrees Celsius already. So this solution suddenly jumps to around 50 degrees Celsius, around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So where did that energy come from to give off heat? Well, the initial energy came from when I heated it up on the stove. It was able to break those crystalline bonds and become a liquid again. So the liquid actually had more energy than the crystals. And the liquid could only cool to room temperature, but there was still some energy in that liquid. What's cool about this is you can actually pour sodium acetate in little bags and you boil it and get it to be a liquid. And then when you want it to become warm, you can make it form its crystals. And in that crystalline form, it's giving off heat until it cools to room temperature again. But in a closed bag, how do you get it to form crystals? Well, you don't need a crystal to start it. All you need is a nucleation site. And you can actually make nucleation sites just by forming a shock wave in there. So what you can do is put a little disc inside of there this disc is a little bit of a semicircle that you can deform and you can pop it. And when you pop it, it gives off a shock wave which forms a nucleation site for the initial crystal and then it can grow from there. For example, I have a bag of the sodium acetate and all I need to do is click this little disc that I put inside of there and the crystals grow from there. Okay, three, two, one. And once they start growing, they grow at a constant rate across the bag. It's really cool to see. The ability to give off heat once a liquid forms a crystal isn't unique to the sodium acetate. Even water does this. By putting very pure water in a freezer and don't let it get too cold, then it will drop below zero degrees Celsius. Oh, awesome. It's working. Look at that. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Whoa, that's awesome. But then if you strike it and get those crystals to form, what happens is the water actually goes up to zero degrees Celsius. So it can start at a few degrees below zero degrees Celsius, but then when the crystal ice forms, then it will become zero degrees Celsius. So it gives off a little bit of heat. The water actually warms up when it forms crystal water or ice. It makes sense to think that going from a liquid to a solid crystal gives off energy or is exothermic because you know that you have to continually cool something in order for it to form a crystal. So you have to take away the energy for the crystals to keep forming. And another way to think about that is just to think that the crystals forming is giving off energy and you have to remove that. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell to be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.